Or I'll mm -hmm. I share. I'll share. Okay. The. Uh... <coughs> All right. Is it available? All right. It's available, but you can record it. Yeah. All right. Thank you. Okay. Mm -hmm. So, uh, so I'll try not to waste our time. So, when I move my screen like uh, my screen like this, is it available? And is it rolling the screen? Is it moving? Yeah, it's it's, it's good. Uh, but okay. uh, have you recorded? Yes. Do you record it? Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Okay. All right. So, uh, okay, I'll start in a few seconds. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you so much for uh, attending today's You Talk session. This will be uh, the first time, I guess. Maybe the second time, I don't know. Um, so uh, on today's topic, I'm going to be the speaker. My name is Safira Zahwa Ananta. We're going to talk about mental health versus mental illness. It is a very serious topic. And um, uh, I hope that, you know, I'm not a... A master. I'm not. Uh, I'm not like a uh, uh, expert to this kind of thing. But I'll try my best to uh, share my knowledge to all of you. And um, maybe I'll try. Well, if you guys think that there is, uh, there are some misconceptions towards my material. Uh, I'm open for any kind of suggestions, criticisms, constructive feedbacks, or even questions during the Q and A sec uh, section. So please. Let me know if you guys have something to say later on. So we're going to talk about mental health versus mental illness, right? This will be the main topic uh, for, of my speech for the next 15 minutes, more or less. All right, let's move on, right? So mental health. Let's talk first about mental health, right? What is mental health? Mental health is any condition that includes emotional, psychological, and social well-being. Now, please underline the word well-being. It affects the way a person thinks, feels, and acts. Um, when you're talking about mental health, uh, when we're talking about uh, mental, it has something to do with experience. If it is a good experience, then it has something to do with our mental health. But if it was a bad experience, then it has something to do with our mental illness. I'm so sorry for any background noises, right? So uh, when we're talking about this kind of experiences, we're... Uh, what happens to us now has a very what happens to us now ha has a very uh, strong connection with experience uh, towards our past i'm sorry somebody's on mute um okay so uh, uh the, about our past uh, experience and and that kind of stuff so uh this mental health of course all of us have a uh, hope that we have uh, a healthy mental. Uh, uh, some people think that mental situation is actually more worse rather than physical situation. Because when we're talking about physical, it is an obvious thing, right? We know that there's something wrong with us when, when we saw something like a, a wound or, or maybe a, 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 like a, 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 an illness, for example, like fever or cough. This kind of thing has something to do with physical. But when we're talking about mental, it is something that most of the time goes unnoticed. We could only notice when somebody has a mental illness by their behavior. And I'll explain that later in a few minutes. So what are the signs of mentally healthy, right? For example, for first, you can adjust constructively to reality, even if reality is bad for him or for you. So when we are uh, having a mental, a healthy mental, it means that we see things from a beautiful perspective, from a perfect glass. So when you, when even if you have a very dreadful kind of a day, uh, uh, you see it as a all right, things happens. I could deal with that, but. Uh, uh, and then you could adjust constructively to the reality, meaning that you you, you have a whole uh, you have a strong grip towards the reality. You know what happens uh, surround you. You know what happens, and you know how to deal with it. That's the first sign of mentally healthy. Second, get self satisfaction from the result of his hard work. So uh, when we're having a mental when 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 we're having a, a healthy mental, that means that we feel like all right, I did a very hard work and this is what i get and you do not regret it you accept it 
You accept it with positivity. You accept it with positive vibes, which is great. That's a very great sign. Uh, that is a very great sign, uh, meaning that you're having a, men a healthy mental. Third, connect with other individuals by helping and satisfying each other. So when you're having a, a, a healthy mental, uh, you could easily connect with others with your friends you could catch up with conversations you could catch you could catch up with uh things around you and you understand that you completely aware about your surroundings which is great and also satisfying meaning that you could help each other you could uh you know understand each other and that kind of stuff and then the fourth one is that accept disappointment to use as a lesson for the future so uh, once again when you're having a healthy mental that means you are seeing the world from a beautiful glass you know like a very perfect glass and you could uh, you could uh, point your i mean you could direct your point of view as from the good uh, from the good perspective so whatever it is whether it is bad or good you take it as a positive thing meaning uh, if it is good, if it is a good thing then you'll take it okay i but when it is a bad thing or disappointment you say all right this will be a, le a lesson for me for the future having a great affection you could easily show your affection towards other you could say for example if you're a father you could e easily say to your uh, to your kids to your wife uh, you you say to them i love you uh, for some people thinking well how hard it is for saying i love you it will be hard for you to say when you're having a very a very bad uh, mental uh, when you're having a, an illness mental illness so, so so don't take things for granted a healthy mental is something that millions of people are craving for because they're dealing with something mentally things that would go unnoticed most of the time right so okay um we're moving to the next one which is mental illness right so what is mental illness it's quite the opposite of mental health mental illness also known as mental disorder is a health uh, condition that affects thinking feeling behavior mood or a combination combina combination of these uh, this condition can occur occasionally or last for a long time so uh, as the opposite towards mental health mental illness is uh is just this this as the saying goes, you know, like uh, seeing the world from a broken angle, seeing the world from a uh, from a broken glass. So this is the perfect. Uh, how do I say this? Uh, a, a perfect analogy for you to understand better what is mental illness look like or feel like. Now, this mental illness also has something to do with uh, 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 our previous experience, our past experience. Uh, mental illness could uh, happen to us uh from various causes well, so what are the causes let's move towards the uh, uh oh uh, I'll, I'll talk first about the common mental illness right <clears throat> uh most common mental illnesses is that depression for example uh w so what is depression depression is the most common type of mental disorder this type of mental disorder is characterized by sadness that is too long so the sufferer can feel hopeless guilty worthless unmotivated to various physical complaints for which the cause is not clear but we need to make a clear difference between depression and feeling depressed uh, feeling depressed it it comes and goes you could feel sad for some days you could feel like you're unworthy you could feel like you're useless but it only lasts for a few days but when we're talking about depression it it goes on and on for days, weeks, months, or even years. And it could get worse and worse during, uh, when time goes by. Uh, when, we're, uh, when, we're having a depressing, uh, when we're having a depressing moment or feeling depressed, when somebody comes to you and they say, hey, let's hang out tonight. Uh, uh, let's do something that will boost our mood. And then you feel cheer up all of a sudden. That's depressed, uh, feeling depressed. But depression, no matter how many people comes to you and say uh, i'm here i'm here for you i will help you it just feels like nothing so depression is a condition where you think that nobody could help you so it is a very serious condition you can't really take it as a as a uh, you can't really take it as um you know like uh you could you can't take it as something like a piece of cake it's not it is a very serious condition and you need to pay attention towards others if you think that my friend is actually feeling depressed or having a depression it is a two 
almost same or almost identical condition but it is a very great uh, but there uh, there is a very great distance between them so the second one is anxiety disorders right anxiety disorders are feeling of anxiety that are very strong excessive and last for a long time and can get worse over time to the point of being overwhelming these types of disorders include panic attacks obsessive compulsive disorder or ocd and phobias so uh, sometimes i got my anxiety uh, but it, you know but it's not that worse i have to admit that sometimes whenever i want to face like uh, a competition uh for the night before or even the week before i feel like i'm ha i'm hyper have uh, i'm hyperventilating which is that, that's not good it, it doesn't feel good you know uh, you're supposed to have you're supposed to having a, a like a, a calm week uh you have to calm yourself before the competition begin but then when you are uh having this kind of anxiety disorder it just ruins it it, it just ruins it all just like you're panic you're panicking you're, you're hyperventilating and that kind of stuff but anxiety disorder the worst one it just comes to you like all of a sudden you could have a you know like me for example right now i'm i'm doing a little speech right now and then all of a sudden i could just hyper hyperventilate i can't breathe so the worst kind of anxiety disorder is that it comes to you all the time no matter what time it is, it's it just like all of a sudden pop off and then shows up to you and then you can't really handle, you can't really, uh, what am I supposed to do? All the, all the thing that you can do is just like focus, trying to calm yourself and then trying to breathe. And then uh, it will be good if, if you have somebody next to you because they will try, they will calm you down. I mean, they will help to calm you down. But when you are, uh, don't, when you do not have somebody else next to you, then things could probably get worse, especially when you're driving. Yeah, I mean, like, could you imagine when you're driving in, in, in a bike, in a motorcycle or in your car and then all of a sudden this, this anxiety just, this anxiety just all of a sudden attack you? That That's just like, it it, it, it got worse. Uh, and also, I, I got to know the fact that uh, this thing happens to lots of people. I mean, this kind of anxiety disorder just all of a sudden attacking people when they're driving, when they're doing something as usual, you know, like us, uh, like as a human being. But then when this kind of uh, anxiety just attack you, then they don't, God knows what will happen. The next one is bipolar disorder. So bipolar disorder is a mental illness characterized by unusual mood swings. Uh, this can this change can occur from very happy to very sad all of a sudden and hopeless. Uh, so this bipolar disorder is like you don't know what causes you switch what causes you to switch the mood. Uh, I mentioned to you right before, right? It, you could go from very happy to very sad all of a sudden. You don't know what happened. You just, you just, all of a sudden, when you're uh, cheering up, when you're watching a movie, having fun with your friends, and then all of a sudden, uh, your mood could just drop to like zero. And uh, this thing, dangerous. This thing is dangerous. Having a bipolar disorder is dangerous. Uh, there was a movie. I mean, lots of movies talking about mental disorder or mental illness. And it could help us to understand about the situation more when we're watching them, when we're watching the main character having this kind of bipolar, dis bipolar disorder. Uh, a movie, this movie, uh, I forgot the title, but the, the main character or the, the actress was Anne Hathaway. And this character ha are ha is having a mental disorder, which is bipolar disorder. And the sad reality is that people who, who are having this bipolar disorder it's pretty hard to get a job because their mood could just switch all of a sudden. And then most people are relentless, uh, reluctant, reluctant to having a coworker or a partner who are having a bipolar disorder. And the next one is eating disorder. An eating disorder is a mental problem that involves you, uh, your thoughts about food and eating behavior. You may eat less or more than you need. This condition is also generally associated with anxiety or excessive worry about body weight and shape. Now, people, uh, eating disorder could happen to anyone. Uh, if do you, I don't know this fact. Uh, I don't know if uh, any of you knows about this fact. Uh, this fact, but Princess Diana actually once, or uh, she was once having this kind of eating disorder, and the cause is actually pretty sad. 
is because his then husband uh saying that she got pretty chubby and it upsets her it's it's quite sad because i don't know i don't understand why we have to judge people when they're eating too much or eating less uh, i mean and it's their choice right we don't really got the right to judge anyone uh when they're eating their things the next one is ptsd right P ptsd or post traumatic stress disorder is a mental health disorder that occurs after a person experiences or sees a traumatic event these events can be life threatening events such as natural disasters car accidents or sexual uh, assaults or other experiences that traumatize them uh i don't know uh, i'd like to ask a question towards our uh participants does any of you know do any of you know a game called the last of us i'd like to know if any of you kn uh, know a game called the last of us please just raise your hand if not it's okay no all right it's okay so uh the last of us is uh some of the cut scenes from the game portray the best about ptsd when you're witnessing or experiencing a, a traumatic events that could haunt you for the rest of your life this ptsd could could get worse and worse all the time but as time goes by if you do not try to find a way to cure them ptsd could be you know like uh you could have flashbacks towards that moment you could have flashbacks and then you could hyper uh, hyperventilating all of a sudden you can't breathe uh, basically you're having like a, a switch reality for a moment you're living a past uh, you're living current situation but then your mind drives you towards that past events that traumatize you for the rest of your life which is bad actually if you wanted to watch what happens to ptsd uh people who uh, to if you want to watch what happens towards people who have ptsd you could you could watch uh some of the scenes from a game called the last of us uh it's uh joel if you want to know the character or ellie so it's yeah it's quite it's quite sad quite uh, it's it's pretty bad actually what happened to them or to all the people who are uh experiencing ptsd now the next one is psychosis psychosis or psychotic disorder is a severe type of mental disorder that causes a person's thoughts and perceptions to be abnormal this condition is characterized by delusions and hallucinations uh in sufferers schizophrenia for example is one of the most common types of psychotic disorders we i don't know about you but i watch so many footage about people who are having schizophrenia and it's it's really bad i just hope that all of us could uh you know like do, do not have any kind of experience with that kind of thing or this kind of schizophrenia because it is actually horrible and it takes a great patient for you to take care of people who have schizophrenia or even when you're experiencing it all right so what are the causes of mental illness right uh this mental illness you know there are more than 200 mental illness uh that that exists in this world and the with varying symptoms and severity uh in this total uh, uh this as i said to you before traumatic events uh, such as domestic violence abuse uh and this kind of thing could actually have something to do with mental illness so the causes is that is divided into four sections the first one is genetic cause uh the, so um hang on here wait a minute all right recording in progress all right so what are the causes of mental illness right uh traumatic events uh, domestic violence abuse or demands that cause severe long-term stresses can be triggers can be a trigger or triggers for mental health issue furthermore a person will find it difficult to deal with stress connecting to other people make choices feelings and can hurt themselves the causes of mental illness can be divided into four which is the first one genetic cause uh it is the you know like when you're a parent when you become parents and then all of a sudden you get diagnosed with, with mental illness then it will be most likely to for you to descend it to your kids so uh 
your kids could have could have you know your kids are having higher possibility to have mental illness too because of this genetic cause second one or or when you got diagnosed uh, right now as a parent it, it is more like it is maybe you know it had it might be coming from your parents as well that's the that's the meaning of genetic cause it's because of your parents and then you decided uh, they decided to you and then you decided to your kids the next one is biological cause so biological cause fa or biological factors such as chemical imbalance uh, in the brain or traumatic brain injury or epilepsy a friend of mine uh, actually experiencing with this epilepsy kind of thing and it's quite horrible what happened to him uh, he cannot swim he cannot having a bright flashlight or that kind of thing like flashing flash warning trigger warning uh, uh, because when they see it i mean when my friend see it it will make them uh, it will make him seizure having a seizure attack the next one is psychological cost so psychological cost is coming from significant trauma uh for example when you are a, a, a soldier who are combating in 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 war then you, what you see on the battlefield could actually haunt you for the rest of your life whenever you maybe like when you're making the slightest mistake then it'll it'll it put lots of people's life will be at stake because of that mistake when you are acting as a soldier that kind of or, or that kind of thing so when you're becoming a veteran uh it uh, it is hard for you to recover from that kind of thing and it happens it happens to hundreds or millions of veterans out there who are who who was experiencing with this kind of military combat kind of thing accidents crimes and violence social I isolation or loneliness could also part of uh, could also part of, of uh, psychological cost now environmental uh, exposure this environment ex exposure could divide into two sections the first one is when you are in the womb uh when you are uh uh as uh you know like environmental cause well, when you're in the womb and turns out your parents having a mental illness one of the you know like genetic cause so uh it'll be most likely to happen to you too because of the chemical thing that is happening inside your brain uh the, the imbalance could cause you into this, this kind of thing uh, of environmental uh, uh of this uh, mental illness or uh alcohol drug abuse this kind of thing could help uh, could cause mental illness to you uh, and then the other one the other environmental cause uh, such as death of someone close to you loss of job poverty that this these kind of things could has something to do with your mental situation mental state so the next one let's move to the next one so this would be the important question right what should we do with this mental illness there will be two sections which is first uh, uh if we got if we are the one who got diagnosed and the second one if the ones we know who got diagnosed if we are the one who got diagnosed what should we do please to anyone out there who are watching this video right now if you're if you believe or if you're thinking that you're having a mental illness uh, you need to get a professional help because we cannot diagnose ourselves we cannot just all of a sudden thinking oh i have a bipolar disorder or or, or i have a, an anxiety disorder ocd ptsd you cannot self-diagnose because it'll be harm harmful for you so please first uh get professionals to help you uh, discuss at least discuss having a little discussion with them second after after it is proven that you you got diagnosed for physical uh, for mental illness please do not hope uh please uh, after you got mental illness diagnosed please do not lose hope so please don't think even if you you found out how your mental illness is incurable please do not lose hope because hope is something that is very important for you to to hold it actually shows how strong your will to to uh to i mean to to get healed so do not lose hope and then reach out to people ask for help there is no such thing as shame uh, when you're experiencing with this kind of thing uh this could also bring us another topic right i don't i don't understand why mental illness is like something stigmatized as a bad thing i don't understand why when somebody is confessing with us that they are having a mental illness which whether it is depression ptsd bipolar and then all of a sudden the society around them just judging them oh they're crazy it's just not like that that simple we can't blame people one-sidedly 
but when they're having uh, this kind of mental illness, we cannot just all of a sudden blaming them that they are uh, crazy or these kind of things. So it's actually quite sad how the real uh, how the society some society are treating those who get mental illness you you cannot just all of a sudden say that oh it's uh, he's crazy just don't we don't really need to help him no that's mean that's bad you cannot do that so if you got diagnosed once again please do not lose hope and reach out to people ask for some help the second one if the ones we know got diagnosed what should we do well, first, be there, help them, support them. Your existence, your uh, presence is actually means a lot to them. I mean, like, I, I, hopefully I will never or any of us will never experience with this thing. But we saw so many videos out there showing elder people got schizophrenia uh, and then their grandchildren or their children get could take good care of them that's good that's good i mean it is sad that they got schizophrenia but knowing the fact that there are people who will take care of them is actually such a relief thing right but imagine to people out there who got diagnosed with this but do not have anyone to help them to support them it is it is bad uh what you know like an, a lonely person a lonely elder person diagnosed with schizophrenic it's going to be very hard for them so if you know anyone who, who got this kind of these kind of mental illness please help them do not judge them whatever the cause are just do not judge them they went through some bad things uh, throughout their life do not judge them help them i'd like to share a little fact about schizophrenia this fact is actually scares the living day out of me because this is a scientific fact. Uh, I don't know if uh, if it is written in some sort of journal, but I got this from internet. So when you're having, when you got diagnosed with schizophrenia, it's already too late for you to cure them because your brain is already a mush. If you, if you know a mush, a mush. So, uh, so when you got diagnosed when you're 65 years old, you already show the symptoms since you were 40s. So it's already way too late for you to to cure this kind of uh, schizophrenia. It's it's you, you, basically when you got diagnosed with schizophrenia, you cannot do anything to it. You, you could just accept your fate because it already shows the symptoms years before, uh, twenty years or thirty years before you got diagnosed. So that is such a cruel, cruel illness. It's like they the this illness schizophrenia consumes us slowly throughout the years and we we did not even notice it so hopefully that'll never happen to us that'll never happen to anyone we know but if we experience it just do not give up and help them now this is a little quote from noah noam spencer mental health is not a destination uh, but a process it is about how you drive not where you are going so it is all about the process. We do not know how the things will become the output of it, but the process. We need to stick with the process and just go with it. Now, this is a, a little memoriam page. Uh, these are the people who are, you know, famous people who got suffered, who suffered with mental illness. The first one is Robin Williams, my favorite actor. He, he committed suicide on uh, for 2014 uh, he got turns out he got diagnosed with Lewy body dementia years before he committed suicide maybe three or four years so the that sickness consumes him slowly and people around him did not even notice the second one is princess diana i mentioned this before she got diagnosed with bulimia and uh, she died gone too soon in 1997 and the last one is Sully. Sully is a, a korean actress or singer i don't know uh she got bullied by the society and turns out she got um social anxiety disorder because of the bullying so that's what i say environmental genetic biological and psychological are the four main causes of 
of uh, this mental illness. So in memoriam, may they rest in peace. Now, it comes to the section uh, for interaction towards the, within our participants. If you guys have any questions, suggestion, or criticism, please, you may speak up now. So do you guys have any question? Okay, guys, if you have any question, you can ask right now. So who has the question? Who? Okay, Eka. Okay, what is the question, Eka? Um, I think that you are still muting your, your voice, so I couldn't really hear you, Eka. Uh, can you... Okay. I, I write it on the chat. So I heard schizophrenia also had to do something with indigo person. Is that right? Because they kind of like hear voices on, or see, see uh, something like uh, haunting them. So is that true or not? Thank you. All right. Thank you, Eka, for the question. Do do I need to hold on the question first and then add, uh, hear another question, or do I need to answer it right away, Zelki? Sure. Uh, maybe you can also uh, wait for the other to ask the question. Okay. Is there anyone else want to ask yeah, the question? I will. Okay, go ahead. Yeah, yeah okay. guys. Hello. Good evening. Hi. Good, Good evening. evening. Yeah, Kasavira. So I think it's. A nice uh, season. I think the, uh, it's a good um, material that I, I think it is uh, very important for us to know uh, about uh, the mental illness. I think uh, the question is um, how do uh, yeah I think uh, what should we do when uh, we meet. Uh, someone who got uh, the mental illness uh, the mental illness it is first and the second turn, can we recognize recognize uh, the mental illness uh i think Ache got caught up because okay. of the internet connection hello yeah i it's like raining i guess <laughs> yeah so, so uh, did you get a question from yes, yes. Yeah, okay. actually got two probably questions. That, uh, uh, probably that right now you can answer this question first, and then All right. we are going to move to other participants, I mean, the other audience to ask okay. a question. Maybe right. right now you can ask that, I mean, answer that question first. Okay, so um, let's, uh, I will answer first uh, the question for Eka. For Apantu, you can answer. You can ask the question. Well, maybe you can ask the question right now. Just shoot it anyway. What is your question? Oh yeah, sure, sure, yeah. Anyone is free to ask the question? Yeah, the one who re who's raising hand right now is Apantu. Quite interesting name. Apantu, could you could you speak up the question? No. Okay. No, maybe Ardian. What about you, Ardian? Yeah, maybe Ardian. What is your question, Ardian? Um, yeah. Hey, good, good evening, Safira. It was really good nice. Evening. And also, thank you so much. Thank you. For all the information that you have presented for us. So, it's about mental health and also mental illness. Uh, you have uh, told us about uh, its distinction, you know, between mental health and also mental illness. And also, you said, uh, you talk about how exactly um, the things that we can do or anything, you know. So um, my question is, I believe that, um, I personally believe that it, it has something to do with lifestyle changes too. So the question is, when we, uh, let's say, when we got diagnosed, diagnosed by the doctor, or diagnosed by the doctor that we, we actually suffer by mental um illness or something what kind of lifestyle changes that probably help us to get the question okay. okay okay i got the question thank you ardian for a very great question i'll try to answer it as best as i could all right uh, so uh 
I will try to answer the questions first, right? Maybe if we have more time, then I will accept more questions. So let's start with Eka's question, right? The first one. <clears throat> I heard schizophrenia also had something to do with indigo person. Is that right? So I'll try to answer these questions from uh, from my personal opinion and personal knowledge. So if you guys think so, uh, otherwise, uh, it is it is completely fine. Uh, in my opinion, about to, uh, regarding this question, Eka, I, uh, schizophrenia also has something to do with indigo person. I do not disagree with this. Uh, I mean, I do not agree with this. Meaning, I disagree. Uh, schizophrenia is completely different with indigo person some people believe indigo is actually gifted they could see things they could see the the other living being uh, um, the other being the ghost the voices but schizophrenia is uh causing i mean the they do not realize it that's what happened to the schizophrenia people they do not realize that they are hallucinating but for indigo people they are completely aware about their surroundings they know that they could hear voices they know that they could see things or even some other gifts that they have they are completely aware for it but for schizophrenia people they are confused they are they confuse to you know they it's pretty hard for them to separate the reality and their hallucination so that's the main difference I think it is a clear distinction between schizophrenic people and indigo people. Indigo is the one who actually uh, realized that it is happening to them, that they are having, that they are different from normal being, a uh, human being, that they are having a sixth sense. But for schizophrenic people, they do not realize it. They are confused. They can't make a clear distinction between reality and hallucination. So... I think it's quite uh, wrong if if uh, schizophrenia has something to do with indigo person. I hope that answers your question, Eka. Eka still here? Oh, Ache, Ache, Ache. All right. Thank you, okay. Sofira, for your answer. All right. Uh, you're welcome. Okay, Ache, I got your question. Uh, all right. So your question. Uh, it's okay. I, I understand that you just got cut out in the middle of your question. So the first question, what should we do when we meet with uh, people who get mental illness? And second, can we recognize the characteristic of mental illness by ourselves without seeing the doctor? I'll try my best to answer these questions. So I'll try to answer the first one, right? What should we do when we meet people with uh, mental illness? For me, first, do not judge them. We do not know what caused their mental illness. We do not know what happened to them in the past. They do not ask for an illness, right? None of us, none of us, uh, none of us, uh, none of us, a living being, who are asking for for illnesses to happens to us. So when they're, if we got them, we hope people could understand it. So do not judge people who got mental illness because they do not ask for it. They never did, and. Try your best to com to make them comfortable. Maybe they do not like being questioned like, what happened to you? What caused your mental illness? What, what happened in your daily life with that illness you have? Do, do not make them feeling uncomfortable because it's quite inappropriate. You're meeting a new person, a whole new person, and then they just come up to you maybe saying that, I'm having a, a, a mental illness. Uh, it happens to lots of people, even lots of celebrities that we know, right? But do not ask them questions that make them uncomfortable unless they, they are consent. Maybe like oh, your best friend, maybe uh, you know that person for way too long and then uh, you want to know a little bit about them so that you could help them <clears throat> for the... Uh, uh for the for the better good right <clears throat> for the yeah for the better one the, the second question can we recognize the characteristic of mental illness by ourselves without seeing the doctor i guess we can i guess we can especially uh people surround us you know it's pretty hard for us to realize what's happening with ourselves sometimes but uh people uh in so sur people surrounding us could clearly notice about that for example <clears throat> uh this is only for example right maybe uh, Mr. Aceh is known for uh, a happy person, 
a person who actually pretty easy to get along with people and then uh you know easy to having a conversation with and then all of a sudden you change to a very morning uh, i mean like a person who got upset all the time a person who got offended and then you you do not really want to talk to people these changes could actually uh, make people notice that there's something wrong with you these changes yeah. could uh, uh these changes could uh make make them believing what, what happened to you uh you got changed you change all of a sudden you uh, you 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 were uh, you were uh you were a happy person and then now you just sat all the time what happened and then they they help us to realize that there's something wrong with ourselves so yeah we can recognize the characteristic of mental illness drastic mood changes drastic uh you know like you feel like you want to sleep all the time but when you wake up the the restlessness the tight the you know the feeling of exhaustion just did not go away these kind of things shows mental illness as at its best so i hope that answered the the question mr ache is that enough mr ache still here i think it's enough uh, because you know I, yeah i just keep out of this room because of my yeah signal is unpredictable i think acceptable <laughs> so yeah thank you for your answer casa vera so i think your voice yeah. if i have a good signal your voice is so clear i think oh. thank you thank you thank you mr ache all right so now i move on to uh, ardian's question uh you be ardian believe that my mental illness has something to do with lifestyle so when we got diagnosed what kind of lifestyle that might change for our mental uh, condition yes ardian uh mental illness has something to do with our lifestyle uh i mentioned before one of the causes of mental illness is environment if you took too many alcohol if you if you're doing drugs abuse this kind of lifestyle are completely affecting your mental stage So when you got diagnosed of course there will be two kind of possibilities that might happen first you take it as a warning all right it's done it's enough for me to abusing myself i'll change my lifestyle from now on or second you think that hey i'm already broken why not why don't i proceed with it it's the matter of perspective right either you want to take it as a positive Uh, either you want to take it as a positive thing or uh you want to take it into a negative thing so lifestyle will change with the way you take it into your perception if you think that it is a warning then you must stop abusing yourself you must stop uh you must stop uh, uh doing things that might harm you or if the if the cause of your mental illness is because of a uh, chemical disease uh, chemical brain uh chemi chemical substances in your brain or, or that kind of stuff then maybe you could try to you know fix your lifestyle to be a healthier kind of lifestyle but if you take it into the a negative perspective then i don't know what might happen i hope that answers your question at the end it would that be enough yeah that's uh, definitely thank you so much for the answers thank you thank you so much at the end for the question very great question actually uh we got less than 10 minutes now i think we could We could have one more question. Sophie, you were you are raising your hand. Do you have any question? Yes, miss. Uh, thank you for giving me the opportunity. Uh okay, I'm just going to be quick since it is less than 10 minutes. Uh, uh one of the friend of mine, uh a friend who is not really close, just like a classmate, I have seen one of her status in Instagram says like this. Uh he, he, she declared that she has a mental illness. And she always said that, uh, don't you even dare say that you can help us because at the end of the day, you're going to leave us anyway. My question is, as a friend, we're not a psychologist, we're not a psychiatrist, we're not an, an expert. But as a friend, as a, another human being, we would like to be there, like you said. We would like to help or accompany our friend who is sick. So... What do you think the best that we can do? Well, our friend who is sick said that um, you're going to leave us anyway. I mean, what else that we can do except just listen to them and be there? There's nothing more that we can do, right? It's just out of our capacity. So what do you think about that? Very great question. Um, it's 
you need to understand your friend first. Well, what do you think? Uh, your friend, she, uh, I, I believe it is a she. What do you think her uh, nature, her uh, attitude, that kind of stuff? When you understand that, then you might know what will be the best approach for you. Because just as you said, there's nothing more we could do than helping them by listening and being there for them. So when they ask you, when they reach you out for help, then you could help them. But when they refuse, they do not want, believe me, you still need to be there. You cannot just leave them alone, even if they think that they are, that they are, okay, I could, I'm good, even if I'm alone. No. It, that's actually part of the mental illness neglecting neglecting that they need help and that'll be dangerous that'll be completely dangerous when it's too late if you think if they keep believing that there will be nobody be there for them then when the time comes there's nothing left we can do but so believe me within with their reaching out or they're not reaching out you still need be, you, you still need to be there for them and making sure that they that they that they do not feel that they do not feel alone. So your presence will be completely important for that friend, even if they neglect your presence say, by saying you will leave me anyway. No, you still need to be there and try a different approach for them. Please make sure that they they will be alright because God knows how long they have left uh, in on this world. I hope that answers your question, Sophie. Would that be enough? Thank you so much, Miss. That's enough. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much for the question. Uh, all right. I think there will there are no more questions. I will give the stadium back, the stage back to our moderator, our host, Zelki. All right, guys. Um, I think because um, right now our time is already up now. So uh, what do you think, uh, uh, Shafira? Um, is that fine? Is that Okay. Absolutely great. Absolutely great. Um. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Because uh, our time remaining only a few minutes here, so um, I think that we can continue over again for a bit uh, next session. Yeah. Uh, uh, Shafira. Yeah. What yes. do you think? Yeah. Absolutely. Okay. 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 So thank you so much uh, for uh, everyone here who are joining uh, this uh, program. We call it like you talk. You know. So we can make it again on the next session so thank you so much uh, to shafira for your time tonight uh doing like the presentation that it was really awesome i really appreciate for that and thank you for all our the audience for joining our session for tonight that's really nice and thank you so much and see you all over again on the next session everybody good night everyone see you bye bye thank you everyone thank, thank you Safira. Thank you, everyone. Safira, thank you, everyone.